All right, you ready to start? Yeah, we can are, go. Are you ready to start? Are we doing a thing? No, you can do the thing. Let's do the thing. Okay. Hey, how you guys doing today? Hey, everybody. We're the Ungodly Geeks. I'm Luke. I'm Joe. And we talk about stuff. Yeah, we're back after... Uh... Well, I mean, we did a, we, we were off a week, and then we oh. did an episode, and then we were off another week. Yeah. Because, you know, one week I felt like shit, one week you felt like shit, and now we're not feeling as much like shit. No, we're back. Good. Um, but whatever we're here we're sorry forgive us blah 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 <laughs> give us money on patreon and we'll do this more often no um so we're gonna start off with news of the stupid because you know why not we always do a little light-hearted way to laugh at things mm-hmm. um there's a german city who's offering 1.1 million dollars to whoever proves it doesn't exist which to me is just a hilarious proposition i really hope somebody who's I, I don't know, the philosophers who, who do that shit of non-existence. Right. Yeah, like, but I hope somebody does, like, goes through that whole di- like kind of diatribe and proves through this, philosoph- the, this philosophical method that it doesn't exist because we not, nobody exists or some shit like that. Well, some dumb shit like that, yeah. Uh, a German city that's been the subject of a long-running online lighthearted conspiracy theory claiming it doesn't really exist is offering big bucks to whoever proves that's true. <laughs> Um, <laughs> officials in Bellfield, Bellfield says Wednesday I'll give 1 million euros this is around 1.1 million dollars to the person who delivers a solid proof of its non-existence um, you don't exist and I can prove it there are no, there are no they said there are no limits to creativity for entrance but only incontrovertible evidence will qualify for the prize the idea that Bellfield doesn't exist when it was first floated was first floated by computer expert Akim Held who have posted the satirical claim on the internet in 1994 in an effort to poke fun at online conspiracy theories huh. I 94 94 oh so my god 25 years this, this guy saw the fucking future of conspiracies or maybe that's all the internet was in 94 conspiracies and the beginnings of porn i mean you know i i'm pretty sure that you know we've all heard the song the internet's for porn and i am 99 percent sure at this point that the internet was primarily created for the stock markets and sharing of pornography so yeah you know but even German Chancellor Angela Merkel once jokingly cast doubt on the existence of the city, which is allegedly <laughs> located around 330 kilometers west of Berlin. So, yeah, you know, if you guys can sit there and uh, prove that this city doesn't exist, you can get yourself a cool million euros. There you go. So, you know, go figure that out. And then you can retire and buy a house in that city. Yeah. You can buy, <laughs> buy a house in the city you proved you just proved didn't exist exactly. because by the time you proved it didn't exist, they will have existed. Um, another story that I kind of wanted to talk about, um, because it's one of those things that's so mind bogglingly like dumb Mm -hmm. is the NRA says a new Florida law will take away rifles from 10 year old little girls on their birthdays. And I'm just, isn't that the worst thing ever? Like, like that you would take away a rifle from a little girl's birthday party. It's like, (sighs) Does a ten-year-old girl need a rifle? I mean, it 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 can definitely be argued that you know men, thirty-year-old man, does need a fucking rifle, right? Like, like there's definitely that argument to be had. But this is just this is just stupid. As Florida lawmakers prepare to vote a potential ban of assault weapons next year, the National Rifles Association top lobbyist for the state said the law would affect children who of all of, who all of a sudden could not shoot rifles on their birthdays. Marion Hammer, the chief NRA lobbyist, met with a group of economists in Florida on Friday to oppose the proposed ban of assault weapons, according to Share Blue Media. She asked if a little girl who wanted to shoot a rifle with a pink stock would be convicted of a felony. So, Are you fucking retarded? Are you literally fucking retarded like do you have a legitimate mental issue do you have brain damage did you get hit in the head with a hammer did you as a 10 year old little girl shoot a rifle and fuck your face up i don't know i don't get it the thing that kills me about this is that normally when the nra comes in to like fight against these laws and do their put the push their money around right right they at least come in with while like usually 
arbitrary arguments, things like, well, you're not, how do you define assault rifles? And well, what's the difference between this rifle and that rifle? Just right, because yeah. this one doesn't look like that kind of stuff is shitty, but at least it kind of has a point. Right. Yeah. Because I mean, not all where rifles are going to be assault rifles, right? Where did they come from with this bullshit about kids don't get their assault rifles anymore? How could you do this? How do you tell a 10 year old little girl <laughs> who got a Ruger 10 with a pink stock for her birthday that her rifle is an assault weapon and she has to turn it over to the government or be arrested for felony possession? Bullshit. I see. That's where I want to see that Florida law. Why a Ruger 10 is considered an assault weapon. Yeah. Like what what makes that an assault weapon? What causes that to be a 1022 is a it, it's not it's not an assault rifle at no, all. Not at all. Even not close. a bit. No. It's a, a fucking plinking rifle. Yes. It's like, for it's for like uh, it's barely for shooting squirrels in your backyard. Yeah. No, e- even that even that would be um like this is for target practice against tin cans. Yeah. Like you could use a 1022 for like hunting and they make survival versions of it for like oh i'm lost in the woods like a cut down 22 um there's no there's i i've never seen anyone consider a 1022 a assault weapon but what if it puts a bump stock on it becomes rapid fire i mean I, you could technically i guess you could fucking put a pistol grip and a like foldable stock or a a, a like uh, collapsing stock on it. I just no, no one is getting their little girl, a pistol grip, 30 round magazine, <laughs> fucking collapsible stock Ruger 10, 22 that counts as a fucking pistol because it's got a, like an arm brace and it's only 16 inches long. Like, no, I don't, I don't believe that, it, that I mean, anybody is getting a pink one of those for their little girl. If they're getting their little girl, a Ruger 10, 22 with a pink stock, it's a fucking, 22 caliber rifle in pink. Yeah. That is it. Yeah. I don't, unless that law is that like super vague that it's banning any rifle capable of semi automatic fire, in which case then the law is kind of stupid. Right. Because then you would ban just about like any semi automatic hunting rifle. Opponents of the proposed Florida ban, including the NRA and other gun advocate groups, say the law is too broad. Oh, Ashley God. Moody, the state's attorney general, leading the opposition against the proposal, also said she believes in verbiage is too broad. Her problem, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I mean... I don't know. I'd have to look at the law to see, but... Because, don't get me wrong, I am someone who... I'm not against the uh, the tradition, and it is an American tradition, of kid becomes like 12, 13 years old, and, you know, their family's a family that hunts, does lots of, you know, outdoor stuff, right, does yeah, lots no. of shooting. You get their, you know, you get a kid a twenty two or a 20-gauge cal- a, a 20 shotgun on their birthday. I got a 20-gauge shotgun on my, like, 12th or 13th birthday. It wasn't mine, officially. Like, I, I could not own that weapon. Right. But it was of course. mine. Right. Uh, and then when I turned 14, I can't remember what the age for deer hunting is, I got a thirty caliber rifle. Right. Lever action rifle for deer hunting. And it's it's not that aspect of gun ownership isn't like that's not what people are going after. No. Nobody's trying to stop you from, you know, having that tradition. It's oh God, it's just so dumb. So yeah, I mean that was just one of those things that I had to touch on. I fucking but the thing it still blows my mind. Why go at that angle? Why is that your argument point? You this new ten year old can't get her assault rifle. Cause now she's gonna go to jail for having a pink rifle. Now you're gonna now you're gonna take it away from her. Like, you're gonna take it away from her and she's gonna be crying on her birthday because she didn't get her rifle. Honestly, that's not, it does sound like a Bobby Boucher argument. It, it yeah. almost before yeah. he was intelligent, like before he went through school and actually learned shit. It sounds mom, like mom, a mom, mom, Mama said, yeah. ma- mama said, sounds like a mama a said ten, argument. Ten, yeah, like, oh get my a 10, God. on a birthday. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've never owned a gun. Um, aside from, well, I can't talk about it. But, um, like, I'm, I'm not, we're not like people who oppose guns, right? Yeah. Like, we're not. We love shooting shit. That's, that used to be one of our pastimes. We used mm-hmm. to go to the fucking range and shoot shit. But it's like. We do need some common sense gun control. In this yeah, country. no, I'm I'm 100 percent like I said before. I'm 100 percent from like stricter bounds background checks and things like the background check. Um, also, seeing but one thing that they've 
um, blocked is in the NRA fights against is that if you have um, government assistance for certain things mm -hmm. that they it they aren't oh that's not a part of the check where if you have government assistance because you've got mental disorders that that was the proposed why they would add this to that background check right um, then it would be flagged of hey this person has these psychoses probably shouldn't sell them this gun I mean. To That's me, been blocked. It makes perfect fucking sense. Someone on the FBI watch list of, hey, this guy might be a terrorist. They're not. A, that doesn't pop up. That should stop you from very much up. pop up. Yeah. Do you do you want terrorists to have rifles? I'm almost. I think. Let's just give them more planes to fly in the buildings too. While we're at it, you know. I think the it's pretty much just checks. Um, have you been arrested? Or have you been convicted of felony? Uh, and are you a legal citizen of the United States? So it's the most limited, useless, arbitrary yes. kind of background check. It ever. is. Okay. It is the most basic as it can possibly be. Um, and in the in certain states, uh, I I don't even know if they go that far. Uh, I know in our state you can you have to be twenty one. Yeah. You can go and buy a rifle, do the background check pay for it and you get it right then some states have the two-day waiting period like michigan um yeah i know pistols are like i think pistols you know specifically due to their concealable nature you do have to wait a certain time not in ohio oh, well, pistols to. too then that was the the first gun i ever purchased for myself yes was um uh, my handgun that i went and i was like I, I you know i never owned a handgun i wanted to get something oh well and that's that's fantastic i went and did the background check and everything kind of did some research on what a gun I wanted. And then was like, okay, um, do I come back? And they're like, what, what do you mean? No, here you go. <laughs> you pay, you pay, you give us money. You find, you sign papers. And actually when I did it that time, it took longer. I had to wait about 25, 30 minutes because I think they had to wow. fax or they had to do something else. Now it's all on a computer, like a fed, like just, you pull up the federal, thing you fill out the information hit enter and it's like five minutes later you're approved or denied pardon me well that is not unnerving in the least yeah <laughs> you know um all right so let's move on something mm. i gotta make fun of because uh, you know the apple versus android debate will always be a thing yeah um so apple just released their little credit card the apple card i love this the apple card um so are they a bank now i i dude i'm not even gonna fucking touch that <laughs> um i mean google tried this a couple of years ago google yeah. wallet and i actually loved it um apple's new titanium credit card comes with a potential headache that would be familiar to iphone users everywhere it can get scuffed up a little too easily in the real world mm. um apple basically tells you uh god forbid my card gets scratched to warn customers, they basically say, don't put it in leather and denim because that could cause permanent discoloration to the capital card. That damage won't last all, won't last, won't wash off. Okay. Um, Apple also advises against placing the card in a wallet slot that already has a different credit card so it doesn't get scratched. Yeah. And the customer says customers should not store their Apple cards in a pocket or bag of loose chains, keys, or other potentially abrasive objects. So don't do anything you would normally do with a fucking credit yeah, card. Yeah, basically, you know, keep it locked away in a safe at your house. Well, see, that might the, the metal from the safe might scratch it, Luke. Oh, you're right. You know what? Wrapped in a towel. Oh no, the <laughs> abrasive nature of <laughs> cotton. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what the fuck do you do with this thing? Gotta man? go get like some fucking micro modal <laughs> special. The company first announced the Apple Card in March, promising the most significant change in the credit card experience in 50 years. I don't know how. It's just a fucking <laughs> card. It's the same thing that everyone else has been doing. Are you not charging interest? That would be a significant change. Uh, no, Luke. The credit card has the classic Apple look. It's white, made of titanium, and generally has a minimalist design. On the cards, you'll see an Apple logo, design. but no credit oh. card numbers. Oh, my oh God. God. Ooh, this is so special. It doesn't have the numbers on the card. If you do sign up for the card, Apple recommends putting it on a wallet, pocket, or bag made of soft materials. 
I hate Apple I also hate suggests Apple cleaning so the titanium card by wiping it with a microfiber cloth that has been moistened with isopropyl Clean alcohol. your card. Clean your card. Fuck you, Apple. Fuck you. You're one of the shitty companies who stopped those chip, uh, the, the tap and go shit from being standard everywhere because no, none of the companies fucking work together on it. And everybody fucking argued. Um, I don't... It's a little more complicated than that. And Apple wasn't at fault. In fact, it was Apple who, who no. pioneered the uh, well, NFC tech anyway. <laughs> that got it to a point where I can use my cell phone to get a drink in the break room. So. Yeah. Well, whatever it is that causes the fucking, uh, that, that's like why Samsung has their own pay, Google's pay, Apple pay, why, you know, nobody uses all those standards. Um. And now Walmart because, has their own. Okay. That's fucking, more a, f- that's more um people like companies and shit mm-hmm. are trying to avoid paying uh the fees the fees which have nothing to do with apple or google or anything i thought it's, it was just something where they, they wouldn't work together on a proprietary it, it, somebody just doesn't want to pay not fees. a proprietary but yeah, okay. i don't know or i, know, I have people all the time <clears throat> where we work ask if we take apple pay or this kind of pay. actually for the first time in a very long time somebody wanted to use google pay the other night yeah and i was like no <laughs> nope. Doesn't. I was like, I, I can't think of anybody who does either. I mean, anymore. I, well, use, I, I don't know how many companies around here, use it now. Uh, let's see. Thornton's takes it. They uh, do. Okay. Thornton's, McDonald's, Walgreens, CVS. I thought a lot of places. There's actually a lot of places around here that take Apple and Google Pay. Oh, that's good. A bunch of places in the mall, too. Yeah. None of them are really places I shop at except Thornton's. But yeah, no, you can totally use. I oh, tap God, and I go to solutions like that. Yeah. Um, I I used to have a uh, debit card that had a tap and go mm-hmm. on it, and I wish I still had that. I I like that stuff. I mean, it was easy. It's just boom, boom. Yep. You move on. And NFC done. is is that is that nice? Um, pardon me. So we're gonna move on. I don't have any more news of the stupids that I really want to talk about. Nothing that was particularly compelling. There was a New York airport worker who was fired for giving a passenger the "you ugly" note. Kind <laughs> of hilarious to me. Um, I know that I saw I saw a couple Florida men posts but i mean they're, they're a dime a dozen yeah. yeah they were kind of funny um yeah i don't know uh in happy fun time kind of, well i don't know i'm excited for it because it's something i've wanted to see for a while um disney and lucas films have uh confirmed they're doing the obi-wan as a miniseries or a a, a show on their disney app yeah uh just like the mandalorian where it's it's funny that after Solo and after these movies that they really really legitimately took that step back and went, we're not gonna do a bunch of money on movies anymore. Let's go ahead and find somewhere else to put these properties. Right. And with their streaming app and the success of other sh- streaming apps and shows, I think that's awesome because that's a story that I want to see told out more. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And they're doing Obi Wan. Supposedly it's gonna have you and McGregor. And Which is kind of interesting. Fuck yeah, I'm 100% in the down for that. Hey. I am, uh, yeah. Maybe it can get me kind of excited about Star Wars again. Yeah. Like, I, I will forever hate Episode 8. Yeah. I'm sorry, it was just bad. So many bad decisions, cliches, thing, stories being told that had nothing to do with what was actually going on. You know, it was, it was not a good movie. Yeah. I don't know what that was. Hopefully it's nobody breaking in. No, I don't think anybody broke in. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. For those who didn't hear, there was a noise out in my kitchen or living room area just now. <laughs> we have no idea what it is. It was the dog. So hopefully we don't get murdered. Mm-hmm. I don't have a dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not allowed to have a dog. <laughs> I would probably have a cat if I could, though. Yeah. Because uh, uh, like down the lane here, uh-huh. um, in the house at the lane, there's they have like, these little kittens, and these kittens sometimes are allowed outside, and they, they roam around at night, and they're the most adorable, playful little fucks, and I thought about kidnapping one of them. I was going to say, and you thought, eh, mine now. <laughs> I'm going to take all three of you. <laughs> <laughs> shh, 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 you are now mine. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I'm the daddy now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your new mama. Uh, yeah, I, I, I fucking the man. That movie, it, it did. It killed a lot of my. It didn't kill my love for Star Wars. I still, I still, you know, I still love Star Wars, and the fact that they're going in a direction, different direction with these shows, 
makes me happy. That's what kind of brings me back to it. Right. Uh, but I mean, the, the thing is, like, we'll see. It, it could they could be dumpster fires. Um, I don't know. I, I if they do the plot of I think uh, on Kevin one of Kevin Smith's podcast, Fat Man Beyond. Uh, Mark Bernardin was talking about uh, he'd like to see something where it's um, Obi-Wan bringing baby Luke Skywalker to Tatooine. Right. And it's like his journey of getting the kid, getting Luke to uh, like hidden with uh, Uncle Ben. Right. And uh, Aunt, I can't even remember Why is her it always an Uncle Ben? <laughs> is it Uncle Ben? No, it's. Um, is it un- no, I don't think it is. I can't fucking I can't think today. Um, but he, he getting it to his aunt and uncle, <laughs> which God, I feel bad that I now I can't think of their name. Owen and, you, and Blue. Owen, yeah, uh, Uncle Owen. Well, I mean, it kind of sounds like Ben. It but rhymes. I was gonna go to the, well, Ben Kenobi is what came to mind. Yeah, but yeah, that whole his like whole journey of him being chased, <laughs> like if he's being chased by some kind of elite stormtrooper unit or something like that through the fucking desert mm-hmm. that could be fucking great or some bounty hunters i mean you could do 10 different ways there's a lot that you can do there yeah because there's not a lot that's that's legitimately um canically known exactly what to happen it's, there. it's one of those few open areas and since they kind of already you know did early obi-wan in mm. the prequels it's like even if they're ignoring the existence of those prequels um, they Which they're not. They're not because they are canon. They were done by the official Lucas Arts Company or whatever. Yeah. Terrible films. Lucas himself. Um. Well, those. Yeah. Then and then they've also done the Clone Wars, right? With the animated series and um, like that movie. But I don't know if the movie ended up being canon anymore. But they've already done the Clone Wars, so that is like the time frame. <laughs> That, that's the open time frame for him because, you know, spoilers afterwards, he dies in Star Wars. It happens, you uh, know. And otherwise, he's an old dude who apparently just lives in the desert the whole time Luke's growing up. I think you could easily fit things in there where, like, different, like like I said, bounty hunters, different, like, gangs or something you right, know, right. might be trying to take over uh, the Luke's family's farm or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he's in the background, like beating the shit out of them, you know, doing like doing whatever kind of shit that so that the they have no idea yeah. that he's even there protecting them. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. Like I'd I'd be I'd be kind of down for that. Or hell, he could go off on his own mission or something like that. Right. They even touched on in the Clone Wars uh the animated series, they did um Darth Maul cuz he came back um but they did his final like it, it thing like he he's officially dead now he goes after obi-wan in the desert and they have a fucking lightsaber duel that's like very <sighs> um traditional samurai-esque where you know they both like holding the sabers and they do one strike thing and obi-wan just flat out kills him kills darth maul and darth maul dies in his arms <laughs> it's like really like it, it, it was very very set like like i said it's samurai like um Japanese movie uh, where he's like, I couldn't ever beat you <laughs> and fucking dies. <laughs> Something like that. But I, I don't know. I, I, they could change that. They could, I'm sure they have control enough where if they wanted to change any of the Clone Wars stuff yeah, can, as canon, they could probably rewrite it if they yeah, want. It's, absolutely. And I nobody's going to stop them. Lucas has no control anymore. So his, what, whatever he says doesn't matter. That would be kind of neat. I don't know. I, I do want to see more of Obi-Wan, though. Um, mm-hmm. I just want Ian McGregor and more stuff. He's a cool actor. He is. No, you're absolutely right. Like, I completely agree. That would be really, really neat, I think. Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> and I'm probably, I mean, there are a lot of people. Um, <clears throat> shit, pardon me. I don't know why I'm <laughs> fucking burping today. Um, anyway, there are a lot of people out there who are like angry for what disney has done you know oh my god they bought fox they're gonna become a monopoly i mean i totally agree with that i i do but at the same time it's like i kind of i kind of want this (laughs) i don't know why i would much much rather them 
buying the rights to Marvel characters back rather than owning lots more studios. Yeah. Um, we're already seeing where when they cancel all those movies and Disney's new basically rule, quote unquote, for um, their movies is if it's not a major, it, it's got to have like certain criteria or it's not getting put into theaters. It's going directly to a streaming service. Yeah. Since they own fucking three of them. Um, that that it's like oh that's that's the death of the film industry right there right like uh i i and it's i right now it's a lot of doom and gloom because of course there's tons of other studios that will promote and you know do any movies and things like that but it looks like as far as anything that would have come out of fox as an indie or a small budget movie yeah. um you're not going to see those in the theater unless for some reason they they change their mind and have something you know that, oh this looks great we'll go, go ahead and promote this um with this new news if you want to get into the fucking disney sony debacle going on right now yeah um where they like, like the so if you guys didn't see the news um Disney and Sony are not playing nice over Spider-Man anymore. Yeah. Disney came to Sony and said, hey, so you know we have this deal of we um, had Kevin Feige as a producer on the Spider-Man, standalone Spider-Man movies, and you keep uh, 100% of the profits, and we get the toy, I, I can't remember, the, um, what do you call that? The Merch rights? Merch rights. Yeah. You guys get 100% of the profits from the movie, we get the merch rights, uh, you guys also fit the bill for the movie. Uh, Disney's like, yeah, so we want to change that. We're going to pay for half the movies, but we also want 50% of the profit. Hmm. And we're still going to keep the merch. <clears throat> and Sony went, no, brah. We're not down for that. That's not how it works. And then uh, Disney's like, okay, then Spider-Man's out of the MCU. And Sony, they th apparently thought, and I guess there's been some mis- like, uh, some misreporting. Oh, I'm sure uh, on the original report that Sony just did not come back. Right. They apparently <clears throat> did uh, come back to the no negotiations and stuff, but right, uh, ultimately right. it's still in the same spot of Microsoft. Or, uh, Microsoft. <laughs> Fucking Disney says, then he's out of the MCU and we're not going to let Kevin Feige be, uh, have producer credit or help you on Marvel's not going to be a part of um, right, right, yeah, of course. the standalone movies. And Sony apparently said, okay, fine. Go ahead. See what happens. And Sony's not playing ball with that shit. I mean, so I kind of, I kind of, I kind of give them that too, right? Like, um, yeah, I'm kind of at both sides. I don't, I, I like, like, I understand. It's hard to hate either one. Like, I, I, I Disney, I don't think needs more fucking money. No, but not at all. they were still willing to pay for half of the production of the films, right? And honestly, I see that as they would probably also be like, hey. By the way, we're paying for half the production of this film, and those films are fuck off expensive to make. Mm -hmm. um, they could be like, let's up the budget this much more, and you can play with this this character, this character, this character. Or, right, right. So it's kind of the kind of thing where it's like, I know I still want to see that, but at the same time, I can't fault Sony for being like, no, we let you use this character, and he's made a massive impact in your franchise in the marvel cinematic universe you guys basically just set him up to be one of the top people in our last movie no you have no bargaining power now yeah if we take him away you're the ones who are fucked yes and in in so like obviously sony hasn't been great with the spider-man movies especially with fucking the amazing spider-man right which is just a dumpster fire they did just however make one of the best spider-man movies ever with um the uh the animated one right with uh enter the spider-verse right so th i don't i i can't say that they can't make a good spider-man movie because they definitely have it in them yeah for and sure. i think they've definitely yeah. learned a lot too I mean, I can only hope they've learned a lot, right? Because yeah. Spider-Man is my guy, and it's like, I want him done right. Yeah. And 
the Amazing Spider-Man, those two movies, did not do him right at all. No. That, and we don't need any more origin stories. Oh, we don't need to watch God, Uncle no. Ben die in again. <laughs> those memes are so good. <laughs> Uncle Ben, when he hears the Spider-Man, might be rebooted. <laughs> it's like, y'all can y'all don't need to do that. We like, get it. Yeah, we, we get he dies. It sucks. You know, like, I don't want Great him. power, great responsibility. We, we understand, yeah. Um, I, I don't know. Like, I just, I... I want them to do well, like I said, because Spider-Man. Yeah. I don't have the faith that they can do well given their track record. I can see them doing well for at least one to two movies because that's all we've ever gotten is one to two good movies, and then they usually shit the bed completely and utterly on the third. So in the thing is, I, also, I don't want them to reboot. No. In the worst no. case scenario where do Sony is reboot. still continuing to Spider-Man, they're doing they do go it alone. The, the, and I think that is like the worst case scenario because I'm I think they'll probably work it out, I hope. But I for the love of God, if they go, okay, we're fucking rebooting Spider-Man, whole new fucking actor and everything, fuck you. You've just ended a movie on a cliffhanger. It was awesome. We're invested in this character. This is the best live action Spider Man we've ever had. Tom, Tom Holland is fucking great. He is Spider Man. He, he is, is Sp- Peter, Peter Parker. Parker. Yeah, he is Spider Man. He does both he, so he embodies, fucking well. He embodies Peter Parker. He, you know, he's got the awkwardness. He's got yeah. the goofiness. I will give you in this last movie, they've given him too much. Where he's got like, I, I'm hoping they figure out some way that like. Uh, Happy's like, oh, by the way, you don't get access to any of Tony Stark's stuff anymore. <laughs> LOL, bye. <laughs> so, like, he doesn't have, like, that auto creator creating a, a spider suit for him and all yeah, that yeah, stuff. Yeah, right, yeah. Where he's still got to be self sufficient, which is how Spider Man always has been. Yeah, for um, sure. And he's still a genius, so he's still making amazing technology and stuff. But I want to, I, I hope they do that instead of, uh, like, he's, you know, having all that support. But still, either way, it, I don't. I don't want to see a new one. I know. No, 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 no. I, 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 I don't need to see a new one. You guys need to continue this momentum yeah. that Marvel set you up with, because if you don't, if you're not able to, yeah, I, I, it's going to fail. And it's, I think it's Lord and Miller who are doing Spider-Man right now, which they're great. And if they're still on Sony's payroll and they're going to continue making them because those guys who did um, the Lego movie. All right. I think it's shit. Maybe I'm confusing DC with or Sony with DC stuff. I don't remember. Look up who directed the last Spider-Man movie. All um, right. But I think I think Sony could make another good movie. Right. However, if they decided to go and go, oh, now we go have Spider-Man with Venom. I'm no. John Watts directed the last Spider-Man. Okay, movie. never mind. I was completely wrong. I'm fucking com- confusing. <laughs> DC news with uh with Marvel news because there's too many superheroes. Jesus much, Christ, Luke! Too much. Kill them all. But no, I I I don't. Oh my God, I didn't like that Venom movie at all. <laughs> and if they continued in that like that style, that fucking. I mean, I I can say ugh. that in the moment I enjoyed the Venom movie. I enjoyed. There's parts um, the Venom movie. I think someone said it. In in the, in that precise moment yeah that we were watching that flick in in the in in the movie theater i enjoyed my time yeah. there afterwards and like towards the end yeah. when they got into the big stupid cgi <laughs> when you get big fight, cgi smashed against each other fight that was when it's like okay this is a shitty movie this i hate really this dumb. movie <laughs> it's just an excuse to have um well what the hell is his name tom hardy beat up some tom hardy's a great actor i love tom hardy i want to see him in more things yeah but it's just some excuse for tom hardy to beat up some brown skin guy it's not fun (laughs) this is dumb (laughs) some brown skin guy who's the least intimidating villain ever yeah right like there was no there's no universe where he would be intimidating. Yeah, no. You no, know, like like I'm sorry, there's just not. It's like it's, he could be in a Gulliver Travels type situation where he is <laughs> seventeen hundred feet tall and everyone below him he could just step on and it's like, like I'll fucking kill you. Oh you all bitch. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> and he's like oh <laughs> Yeah, like he's, there's there's no universe where he is that intimidating. So he's I just, just like fucking Lex Luthor from BBS. Yes. Fucking um 
You you got little fucking, baby faced, whatever the fuck. You you oh what the hell is it? Jesse Eisenberg? Jesse Eisenberg. You got They're Jesse on the same level. Eisenberg to sit there and play Lex Luthor, who is this intimidating, badass, multi billionaire guy who who who, oh, who, who I, is like I'm he's a badass. He really gotta, is. Uh, after this, I, I do have one other topic that uh, I almost forgot. I watched a movie, but like like there are moments in the Venom movie. But they're few and far between that are good. Yeah. And generally, they're not the action scenes. Like, the, the one that I can think of that was pretty entertaining yeah. was uh, the chase scene. Yes. Uh, chase even though it was, was so dumb with the stupid fucking exploding drones. Other than that, like, some of the Venom fight in the smoke and stuff when he's flinging people around, kind of good. Tom Hardy's good. But <clears throat> but there's nothing that there's, there's very few moments. Yeah. Like, uh, fucking single digits. Whereas you go to the Spider-Man movies, and it's it's just good the whole all. fucking movie. There's lots and lots and lots and lots of like good things about that movie. Like yeah, like put them together, and no, I don't, I don't think with the way they've currently built Venom up in the story wise too, um, that he would uh, lift Spider-Man or Spider-Man it, would lift it. I think it would pull it down. It's like it's like taking dog shit and mixing it with vanilla ice cream. Yeah. And milkshake. Is right? this good? No. <laughs> no, it's not. That like, does vanilla not ice cream good. is great. Dog shit is not great unless there's a purpose for it, like flinging it into your neighbor's yard. <laughs> and setting it on fire. Or in a setting bag. it on fire in a bag and putting it on someone's doorstep, right? Like, like <laughs> I love these... that analogy. It's venom is useful dog shit. <laughs> venom is useful dog shit. And uh... Spider Man is. Uh, the best vanilla ice cream you've ever had. It's just really good. And combining the two together does not make a good milkshake. It makes a shitty milkshake. Even though I do want to see Venom in a Spider-Man movie, it's just it, I mean, they, Ven- like like Venom is one of his best different. villains. Oh, totally, one hundred percent. Like, and I I absolutely loved Venom in like in the animated series because yeah. he was anytime he showed up. Thing, cool shit was about to happen mm-hmm. like black suit spider-man is one of the coolest fucking spider-mans i've i think i I've, I've ever known you know and, and there's been a lot of spider-mans um i think that's important too is that you get to venom by having peter parker go through you know oh i'm i can be i'm just this fucking powerful like the the whole thing he gets from the venom suit where he just gets arrogant and gets more violent and stuff and then realizing like this isn't what i want to be yeah fighting off the suit and then you get venom who is that embodiment and he's now fighting against all of that that rage and that pride and all of that in Uh uh you know the physical form i don't know it's it's just i just don't like it i I, yeah i um they if they if it's possible they could go okay the venom movie didn't happen but we're still going to use Tom Hardy Venom and in the Spider-Man and introduce him that way and then have him written by the writers and the people who have been doing these Spider-Man movies. That could work. That could work. I just don't. I, mean, I don't think they'll do that. I mean, that goes from like useful dog shit to maybe like low quality chocolate ice cream. Well, I mean, at that point, you've completely eliminated its baggage. It did that movie didn't happen type thing is what I'm saying. Okay, in that case, it, it goes to like vanilla chocolate swirl of yeah. awesomeness. You might get something provided, good out of it. it. Provided that you know the writers can can do what they need to do to yeah. make it to make it right. I mean, I don't know without Kevin Feige there and them taking away some other key personnel. I don't know can it really be that yeah. great. That's the question of, and I believe that at least, especially with the first Spider Man movie, that the Marvel people, maybe Kevin Feige himself, maybe other writers, and they 100% made that movie work. Yeah. Like, I don't I, I don't really have any faith that it was Sony who was doing that. Yeah, no. I think that mostly came from the Marvel side. So it depends on how many people, uh, and I think Far From Home was great. So how many, how much of that was Sony's people and how much of it was Marvel's input? Marvel, like, I know they've said... Kevin Feige would directly be there, like, "Hey, this is great. What about this beat? Blah blah." blah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, who knows, man? I hope, I, I hope we get another good movie, but I'd much, much rather not have the ent- entire MCU, like this giant chunk ripped away that they just. Oh, uh, who's that other Avenger? Oh, we don't talk about him. Like, what do you mean you don't talk? You mean about Night him? Monkey? Yeah, he's <laughs> not. He's not around anymore. <laughs> 
which by the way your joke uh, that you made yesterday about you know um their next movie being you know oh i can't claim that that was that was a meme i saw where it was like uh, uh, uh night monkey by uh Tom Tolland. Tom Tolland. <laughs> the next uh the next uh Marvel superhero Night Monkey <laughs> played by Tom Tolland. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter whether you can claim it or not. I found that hilarious. Yeah, oh, so yeah. Thank that you that for was that. good. <laughs> um although I I can see though where the MCU right now if it, this was going to happen, this is probably the best place for it to happen. Right, right. Because there's so many fucking crazy changes going on to the MCU period. That you can, you're going to get new characters coming in this phase with the uh, the Kung Fu guy. Um, we've got Doctor Strange is apparently going to go to another fucking world and like reality and have a horror movie. Which I'm kind of excited for. Like, yeah. I'm not... I'm not huge on horror, but I don't hate it. Like, I'll sit down yeah. and watch a horror flick. If I've heard a good thing about it, like Get Out or uh, Don't Breathe, those are good horror flicks. Yeah. For, with simple premises, which we've always said, keep it simple, and it's yeah. amazing. Um, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm kind of down for that. Like, Especially because I don't think, while well, they're calling, this is still, I think this is going to be the way most of the Marvel movies are done, where it's, it's horror and, you know, a Marvel superhero movie. Yeah. So I'm sure there's going to be those ass. It's not going to be the whole time like pants shitting terror. No. And no. jump scares and you know because I, yeah, it's going to be both. Where in PG-13 horror works. I'm the horror movies that I've enjoyed over time tend to be like rated R slasher type horror. Right. Yeah. So sure. uh, you know we'll see. I, I can't. Like the original Halloween or like yeah, yeah. Freddy. Uh, um, fucking Friday the 13th, yeah, Friday on Elm Street, yeah, like stuff like that is, mm-hmm. is yeah, <laughs> Leprechaun, <laughs> Leprechaun, yeah, terrible movie, hilarious movie, but it's something you can enjoy, exactly. Right? All right, so there was one last thing you said you wanted to talk oh, about. Oh yeah, so DC released another animated movie, uh, the Batman Hush, which I saw that on sale. Yeah, and I'm like, huh, Luke said that was good. I should go watch that. Yeah, I got one of those discounts on from Google to download something for oh wait no i didn't i think i just outright paid for this one uh either way the movie um again keeps up with the animated dc stuff and it's fucking awesome i absolutely 100 percent love animated dc movies right they have been killing it and killing it i didn't i missed or well i just i haven't watched because he's not he's not my like one of my top superheroes um, they they did Rise of the Superman or War of the Superman, whatever it was. It's, it's the story of when Superman's dead and comes back and there's a bunch of different quote-unquote supermen. There's like an android one. There's Steel. There's, I think, a Superboy. Oh. <laughs> I just shared the same image you just shared. Did you? <laughs> but um, I missed that one. And then I ended up watching Hush and it's so fucking good, man. It's like, it it's a like really tight Batman story where it's it, it's exploring I'm, I'm all him. down for Batman stories yeah like, and, I really am. and it really does explore him more as a character because there's like there, there's some like emotional stuff there's relationship stuff mm-hmm. um that it's like almost he you almost see him getting over his baggage as bat as Bruce Wayne as Batman like like over, you know, oh, maybe I want a different life. Right, right. And of course, you know, it's just fucking all comes crumbling down because it's Batman. It's a, it's yeah, a dark. That's how brooding. it works. It's, it's, yeah. it's how Batman is. But it's such. Like oh, something so the Joker good. does fucks everything up. The Joker's in it. He's not. He's not a main villain. The villain is Hush, which if you've read the comics, then it'll be spoiled for you. You already know where it is. Yeah, goes. I have no idea who this is. So that's I had, great. Um, yeah, I never read Hush either. I know it's one of those comics everybody says, oh my God, if you like Batman, you have to read Hush. Right. Um, so I didn't know the twist was coming. And when it happened, I was like, no fucking shit. Because I'm my original, my Batman was the animated series. And... So I all these characters that are in it that make it like even Clayface makes a fucking appearance, which I was just like when as soon as I see Clayface, I'm like, yes, fuck yes. Like I was so happy. It's like I forgot you existed. Oh man, like every character I think like one of the only the only characters who don't have anything, even this Clayface is small, but like you see Penguin and I think like Two Face in a cutscene, like a like a, a montage thing. Right. Um but I mean fucking ivy's in this um joker harley tons and tons of characters 
Um, even Lex Luthor shows up for a small part. And it's fucking, it is so beautiful because it is this, it, it shows the difference between like Batman and Superman when dealing with Lex Luthor. And he just, sh- he sh- Batman shows up in Lex Luthor's house to get something. And Lex is like, really? This couldn't have waited till 7 a.m.? <laughs> you had to come at 3 a.m. Like, it's so fucking great. Because he's like, Jesus Christ, I'm glad I don't live in Gotham. <laughs> I'm, I just rented this movie in 4K. Um, yeah. it's Oh, it's it's very much worth the watch if you're a fan of it at all of Batman or the DC animated stuff. I mean, uh, it's good. I love Batman. Um, mm-hmm. I'm also one of the people that uh, do agree that he might be a little overrated <clears throat> at times. But I do totally yeah. love Batman, yeah. Yeah, I, the when you're comparing <laughs> heroes and powers and things, I get that. And even some of the stuff they've done in the comics. But DC, for the most part, DC themselves, oh, it's shit. I not... Oh, watch it yet. <laughs> it's, he's not unreasonable in the comics. Like, in this, right, right. In this he really... It, it's, it's not the, like... Um, amazing unbeatable batman it's got the detective stuff in it it's got the stuff that you know you don't stuff... see in the batman movies because they never fucking promote it they always only have him be the fly-in punchy punchy or the brooding i, don't I know. mean I, like I've... like and that's the thing that kind of does bother me about many of the batman flicks it's like mm-hmm. he was originally like he was the detective that He's was the detective the, that was the intrigue about mm-hmm. him you know it wasn't that he was a multi multi-billionaire with powers that beat everybody because he's rich and popular yeah. those weren't his superpowers his superpowers was a keen intellect yeah you know a hyper intelligence where he's able to identify and piece together clues and shit and figure something out and that was one of the things about batman i personally enjoyed as a kid <laughs> and in a fight if he's outmatched he's willing to cheat like when he fights bane yeah it's right great. like it, it, like he's doing he's gonna do what it takes to win but he's not mm-hmm. gonna kill anybody yeah and he's not gonna go overboard and it's like that that's that's why it's cool I don't know. Yeah, yeah. This definitely 100% hit that itch of uh, Batman, like, content. Right. Which, you know, I, I now, I'm i going to go watch that mm-hmm. movie uh, probably the next off day I have because mm-hmm. I'm going to go play Fire Emblem. I'll be honest nah, with you. I don't blame you. Yeah, but, um, the same when I get home. <laughs> it but, is an addiction. Yeah, I, I just don't know, man. It's just, uh, God, I, I, I want more Batman. But I want more Batman being Batman, not being, you know, the movie Batman where he's punching things and that's all he does. It's why I'm very much hoping that this bat, this new Batman movie being done um, is like it, it lives up to that small budget, uh, right, or small right. er budget, like a self-contained Batman story, which is supposedly that's what we're getting. Uh, and I still say the like the the best of part of batman to do a movie right now would be early batman yeah not after he's got his entire rogues gallery yeah and you no know origin stories you do batman as like maybe not year one but he's been batman for like a year or so right that's he's still he's still getting his bearings down yeah, you know? essentially where fucking spider-man joined the mcu he's only been spider-man for a year maybe a few maybe even less like six seven months yeah he's not got a rogues gallery really uh but that i think that's where you put that in and and you can build on that um i don't i don't know about how doing origins of like the villains but you could have like two-face exists or um fucking the joker already exists type thing and everybody knows the the joker is yeah, uh, absolutely. Or Penguin or something like that. Like, by now, I, I would imagine that enough people know who the Joker is, you yeah. know. I don't. Like, like Two-Face's origin as Harvey Dent is an amazing story. And uh, the Christopher Nolan movie did it really amazing. Like, Yeah, no, I love... I mean, The that's... Joker outshines him in that in that movie. But at the same time, Harvey Dent's origin is fucking amazing. It's, it's such a great story to go from the highest good to the fucking lowest dark the lowest this, low yeah this super evil like a flip of a coin is is he uh, gives no fucks uh it, like whether someone lives or dies it's just a flip of a coin so i i don't know i i i don't i want more batman i want a good batman movie and, and they're so few and far between um i mean that that's like for me the dark knight like you just mentioned is yeah. still one of the it's still the best batman flick 
because mm. it does have kind of a mixture of all of the things that make Batman Batman. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a little bit of the detective work. There's a little bit of the morality, the ambiguous morality. There's the, the Joker being <clears throat> probably the best Joker ever. Yeah. There's, like you said, the, the whole Harvey Dent becoming two-face origin which was done well mm-hmm. like there's a lot of that that that's just great and there's so much good in that movie even and the action sequences are top notch my biggest complaint about the christopher nolan movies was with the exception of the first one uh and even that one to an extent is there batman does not spend enough time being batman and like a quarter of those movies or like even more of those movies is him trying to not be Batman. Yeah. Which is very, very fucking frustrating as a fan of Batman. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like the fucking second, uh, the second and third Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies. Yes. It's him whining about being Spider-Man half the goddamn movie. And it's like, dude, and then you're course, fucking Spider-Man. Spider-Man three, you got emo Spider-Man. Exactly. Emo he Parker, quits. He like, throws the fucking suit away. Uh, uh, it's the same thing with the fucking Christopher Nolan movies. It's like, maybe I don't I need to be Batman anymore. But it's like, no, come on. I want to see Batman be Batman. Let's, let's fucking go back to the 80s Batman. Uh, the fucking original where he's Batman. The whole movie. Yep. I like that. That's what I want. That was good. That was amazing. Yeah. I like that. Um... The fucking, speaking of DC movies, the production of Aquaman 2 has been put on hold because um, Jason Momoa, that's who it is, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Um, you got it. He is busy protesting uh, the construction of a giant satellite dish on a volcano in Hawaii. Yeah. Which which is awesome at the same time. What are you doing, Jason Momoa? I'm, I'm on, like, I'm very much for scientific advancement. And normally I'm not for the whole sacred blah, blah, blah type stuff. Yeah. But this this is one of those cases where it is like really shitting on their natural land. Like it's it's the, the, they had this deal about how many dishes could be made on there. And then while this one doesn't outnumber that number of dishes, it's going to be like a hundred times bigger. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of like. Yeah. Like like I, I, as somebody who. who who tries to balance those two things like i'm i'm kind of at like a yeah i'm kind of at an impasse myself because like yes we we want to advance science i want to know where the fuck the universe came from yeah and, and this, this is one this of the ways to do it this massive telescope this is the way to do it but at the same time it's like okay well let's not shit on their their, their land that means something to them exactly so it's like especially because we've already got history right with- being terrible to the hawaiian natives or terrible like white people have a history of being terrible to (laughs) literally everyone yeah so like let's not be terrible this time you know find yourself another like there's gotta be there's gotta be this is the literally the best place on planet earth to put this dish like which is really unfortunate yeah like we've got billions of square miles like build it out in the middle of the fucking ocean. I don't know, but yeah, like, I, don't know. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I wish they could come up with something like that. But yeah, it's apparently like one of the or is the best place. You know, in this instance, maybe you should settle for second best. Exactly. You know, like like second best. Maybe find somewhere else. Uh, yeah. But yeah, he's he's he. I, there was a picture the other day where he got arrested, and all the cops are posing with him, <laughs> taking a selfie, and he's just kind of got the handcuffs on, like shrugging his shoulders, like, "Eh, what are you gonna do?" <laughs> That's kind of actually kind of fun, though. Yeah, like, I can I can dig that that particular like not him getting arrested because that's shitty because he's just he's doing what he believes he's fighting for something. It's he that sort in. of where he's arrested for trespassing because you know the pro, they're protesting or whatever. Yeah, so I'm sure he probably spent less than six hours in in lockup right, yeah. and was let out and stuff which is why the cops didn't get in trouble for like asking for autographs and like can we get a selfie <laughs> like, with Aquaman. Well, Plus, like, i'm I sure most of those there. police are they're hawaiian natives as well they probably again they don't even agree with yeah they probably didn't even want to arrest him but yeah. you, know, you got to sit there and, but you got and... they're doing their job yeah, like that. That's kind of what you got to do. Like yeah. that. That sucks. But you know, not everybody has the the uh, wherewithal, the ability to go. You know what? I'm going to stand up yeah. for my beliefs instead of doing this. Because you know what? Motherfuckers, food is expensive. I got to get paid. <laughs> you got Aquaman money. <laughs> like, like when you look at it, like twelve dollars for a gallon of milk is too much fucking milk. Too much oh, yeah, for a gallon of milk. How much this shit is over there? Like, like fuck that. <laughs> then again, I'm like, I'm sure that they don't like milk. You could they live for 
thousands and thousands of years without milk. And from then we I, brought it. From what I hear, because um, I had a friend who used to live there, mm-hmm. um, like the local Walmarts or local grocery stores would get like pallets of milk in every so often. Yeah. And like I said, they're like 12 to $20. Yeah. Like a gallon. We pay like a dollar seventeen right now. Oh, yeah. Okay, because well, it has to get so, shipped across the fucking ocean. So it's like it's like twelve twenty dollars a gallon. Yeah. And this was like two thousand five mm-hmm. when things were still, you know, like not super expensive. Um, and uh, he would sit there. He told me one day he went to go went to go because whatever they got some milk in his little grocery store. He went there and people were buying them right off the pallets. Oh, and wow. they sold out in minutes. Jeez. Yeah, like that's the kind of like I guess Hawaiians are really fucking like milk. I don't know, yeah. but yeah, like like he says stuff like that. I mean, that, milk's great, so I don't blame him. Yeah, I know, a milk, lot of I'm sure there's is a fine. lot of people there. Like I had who, a craving for milk like, a couple days ago. I went and bought half gallons and was drinking it. Like yeah. just walking around my house drinking milk. Like mm-hmm. that's all I was doing. Um, but yeah, like it's it's strange. Yeah, it's, it's expensive, yeah. man yeah uh, well it's like property is expensive Alaska. you know like like housing is really expensive out there like everything is expensive in hawaii yeah except meth apparently i don't know hey I, you know what maybe when we buy greenland then we can have another place for uh oh my god no <laughs> that was the news of the stupid i couldn't remember <laughs> oh my yeah you know i i <laughs> try not, i didn't <laughs> i try to avoid um covering that kind of stuff because it's like everything he does qualifies for news of the stupid um, <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure we could go and find a story that this whole thing is fucking a co- like a, a, a cover up for is like th- this will become the big news story because we're not talking about that, which is vastly more important. I mean, and that's know, been his M.O. Yeah, no, like that's been his whole thing since the beginning. Yeah. Right. Uh, like just distract us with dumb the stupid distraction. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. So that they can do this insert horrible act over on the left. Oh, like, well. The fucking kids, the detain. I mean, yeah, all, yeah, it all doesn't stuff. matter. Doesn't matter. That's moving on. That's the way the media goes. Yeah, like that's just the news cycle, man. That's why I don't fucking watch the news anymore. What the fuck is DC? That that just makes me think. What the fuck is DC doing right now? Well, I guess Wonder Woman two is the next thing, right? Because I heard the Flash is again fucking having problems with getting a goddamn director and, Dude, and writer or something. I, I have no the idea. Flash. They might as well fucking give up on it at this point. I have no idea. Like, all right. So, the last couple of weeks, I've not mm-hmm. paid attention to anything. Yeah. Because literally all I've been doing, like, I'm sorry, guys, I've been playing Fire Emblem. It's, <laughs> it's an amazing game, and I love these games. So, so um, <clears throat> which, by the way, play it if you haven't played it yet. Yeah. You know, go sell your kidney to buy it. Like, it's, it's a good game. Buy it twice. Even if you've never played a Fire Emblem game, this is by far one of the easiest Fire Emblem games I've ever played. Right. Even on um, normal hardcore mode or whatever, when your characters have uh, permadeath. Yeah. It's still in the battles are insanely easy. I mean, if, fact, if you have any, if you're careful at all. Yeah, um, it, it is a great game. Though. Yeah. It is easy as hell, which is why they're releasing Lunatic and Infernal difficulties later, mm-hmm. um, which are supposed to be dropping with a free DLC. So even if you buy the season pass, you still get those. Nice. Um, so I almost bought the season pass and was like, eh, it's cool. I, I did buy the season pass. I bought it all at once. I paid yeah. the $90 mission fee and, um, I haven't even gotten into the DLC yet, and when I when I judge the value of a game, I base it on um like a dollar an hour, right? Like that's that's how I base my value. Do I'm paying a dollar an hour to play this game? Will I get my value out of it? Um, so I paid ninety dollars for Fire Emblem. Mm-hmm. According to my save file, I have over a hundred hours, so yeah. I've gotten my value. Yeah. Um, did the same thing with Skyrim. I've gotten mm-hmm. so much value out of Skyrim. I've gotten so much value out of The Witcher Three. So that's how I base. Like, is, is this game going to be worth it? If I pay six dollars for a game, am I going to get 60, 60 hours worth of play out of it? And so far, yes, absolutely. I think that's kind of an. Um, that's kind of an. It does that doesn't work for every game. At least for no, me. no, I get that. Because like, there's there's like, there plenty games. of games that are fourteen hours that I've enjoyed the fuck out of that I'm happily. Right. That I paid sixty dollars for. That's why I that's why I'm so particular about the games I buy though. Yeah. Like like that's why my Steam library isn't got doesn't have seven hundred and eighty nine games in it. Because it's like it's only got hundred and fifty. Yeah, two hundred and something. Exactly. That's what but, I'm saying. It's still it picky, quote unquote. Picky, yeah. 
So it's like, <laughs> like there are games I picked, like, okay, but that's the value of proposition thing. I paid like 12 cents for a lot of those games. Yeah. So if I get an hour of enjoyment out of them, they paid for themselves a lot over. So yeah. it's like, um, so that, that's kind of how I look at those games. Like, yeah, like the, like the Valve bundle. I picked up the Valve bundle, which had every fucking Valve game ever created. And it was like $12 for like 45 games. Mm. So like, I don't care. <laughs> I paid twelve dollars for forty-five games. At that point, it's like I don't even need to play them to get value out of them. I mean, you do. You said, I know. and that's like I have to go buy this. It's on sale. I don't need it, but I'm gonna go buy it anyway. <laughs> I did not buy them with the um, pre the idea in mind that I was saving money by buying yeah. them. It was like, you know what? I, I should own this. I might play that one day. I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't know what my life is going to be like in five years. <laughs> so I'm going to buy this because it's $12 for a fuckload of games. Like a lot of the game, like a lot of the shitty JRPGs I have on my list, I paid like a dollar for six of them. I'm like, mm-hmm. fuck it. Why not? I like JRPGs. Maybe this could be a good distraction one day for five hours. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, with Fire Emblem, I have definitely gotten my value. Games like Hollow Knight, I've gotten extreme value out of because I think I paid twenty dollars for Hollow Knight twice, and I've gotten at least six hundred and sixty hours out of that that game. Same thing with Bloodstained. I paid forty bucks for it. I I got my value out of it. I got mm-hmm. uh, that game is so replayable. Um, but right now, it's overshadowed by Fire Emblem. Yeah. So. Well, I think that's it for us. Yeah, I, think I don't good. have anything else to really say. Uh, I fire I can't emblem. think of anything. Go go watch Batman Hush. Uh, mm-hmm. Boycott Venom. Did we talk about um, uh, bu- 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 Hobbs and Shaw? We did not. I haven't even seen it yet. Oh, that's right. I wouldn't fucking saw it. You wouldn't saw, wouldn't saw it. it. Uh, we we mentioned it in our last episode. Did we? okay. Yeah, you I talked about it a little bit. It how it was fucking good. A bunch of goofy fun, which is amazing. That's what we need. Yeah. Um. But yeah, you know, we're gonna cut it out now. We're gonna wind it down and. Mm-hmm go about doing things i'll go edit this and take shit and luke will go home and play video games and pass out <laughs> um but if you liked what we had to say if you liked listening to us even if you just put us on in the background and went and did chores and chuck with a dumb shit that, I, that we said every now and then you know support us give us a like share subscribe comment mm-hmm. give us ratings on places that you can give us ratings on you know if you ever feel like it on itunes like it on itunes yeah if you ever feel froggy, you know, feel free to, you know, take the RSS feed and submit it to other podcast things. We don't care. Do whatever mm-hmm. you want. Um, I, and I say that when I say do whatever you want, you can also use our like clips from things to make dumb videos with. Go for it. I don't care. Um, and, you know, if you really like what we do, you want to be a part of our community, sign up for the Discord. Mm-hmm. Links are on the website and are at the bottom of every YouTube video. So, and you want to really support us uh, you can always give us a buck on patreon get some clip perks stuff like that and that's really about it love you forever love you forever <laughs> eternal spot on our credits page every now and then we might make fun of you i don't know mm-hmm. um but for the ungodly geeks i was joe i was luke you guys have a good day see you fuck yeah <laughs>